We're back on the road this April with our live show, Cocaine Cowboys. If you want to hear the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombian powder and those who made millions in the gold rush, join us in Killarney's INEC on Saturday the 13th of April. Tickets for Belfast show have sold out on Ticketmaster.ie, but limited availability remains at ulsterhall.co.uk. That's ulsterhall.co.uk. So just copy that okay. and put that into your browser of choice. Okay. And we're going to take a little tour then around the house do that. Yes. of Ross Browning, a uh, Kinahan boss here in Ireland. And this house has been seized by the Criminal Assets Bureau. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, I can walk around the house myself on this virtual tour. So now that's the kitchen. That is the kitchen and there have been some, I imagine, fixtures and fittings removed. I mean, you can see there that there is no cooker, but maybe people take their cookers with them, do they? Um, uh, well, I guess so. Maybe it was needed cha- updating or something. So how would you describe this? Modern, nice big open plan room with double doors out to a garden, kitchen diner. Kitchen diner, and it's got a nice kind of curved flooring aspect there. You know, you can see where the, they don't do the, the tiles into the wood in a straight line. Yes. I'm sure the tiler and the wood fitter were really enjoyed doing. There's a nice sort of tile uh, feature wall where there's obviously was a stove fire. That is also do- doesn't appear to be there, although the grate is, is down. So at one end of this room, there's a, a big L-shaped couch and a, a stone wall facing it that you'd have your stove and presume you'd put your television around there somewhere. It looks huge, this house. I'm yeah. going to go out here and see, I'm going to go down the corridor here now. This is really exciting. I never thought I was going to be a guest in Ross Browning's house like this. <laughs> Obviously a bedroom to the front, nice bright fitted wardrobes and a lovely ensuite bathroom there. Are you in the same room as me? No, I'm I'm just wandering around now outside. <laughs> Are you waiting for you to finish. I waiting am. for me to finish. I'm, I'm looking. Gonna... I'm looking at the paddock. I mean, it, things are a bit overgrown. So I mean, you know, it's a little bit overgrown. There's a bit of moss growing on the I'm gonna cobble lock. So I mean, but it has. I mean, don't forget, it's it's uh, last summer when it was actually handed over to yeah. cab. So we have a couple of outhouses and stuff as well. But this is this is the red brick house. So this was actually Ross Branding's house with yeah. his 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 partner. Um, it's only two bed, is it? This is called the cottage. No, yeah, the cottage is is the original lodge that was on the property and that was derelict. Is this and, and the that's house where, that was occupied by his mother? That's his, yeah, his mother, oh. Julie Conway, and, and her partner, um, David O'Brien. David O'Brien, a former, a former, former member of the, the guards. More, former member of the Guard of Cold Case Unit. Um, I didn't realise I was in their home there now. I thought I was in Ross's. And, and interestingly enough... Um, like when Cab when Cab got their judgment, Judge Owens at the time uh, accepted Judy Conway's assertion that um, a lot of the renovations were carried out, uh, as she put it, it was all me and Dave. Right. Which included a 40,000 euro loan from the Garda Credit Union. So he actually said that, um, and was very specific, that the value of the property extending only to the curtilage, which I presume is literally the footprint of the house, yeah. that a quarter of the proceeds from the sale of Chestnut Lodge will go back. Will go back. Will go back to them, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Can I just tell you something? I'm stuck in Chestnut Lodge and I can't get out of it. Oh yes, here's the main house. Well, I'm going to just copy this. I, I think you can actually go through the walls if you just click on them. Oh, on well, I'll just, I'll, I'll go just, into Ross's house now and just have a look at that. I'm sure he won't mind me having a snoop. He's given it up anyway, hasn't he, for his... Uh, well, he didn't actually contest uh, the case at all. Um, it, it was uh, like he was named along with, you know, quite a few members of, of his family, including his mother and, and his and his wife. Uh, and, you know, there was a certain amount of, you know, they, they did, did their best to, to hold on to, you know, both those houses, the shed, the land. It's 3.2 acres. There's also two um, pieces of land in Rush, uh, which are very much kind of... I suppose it plots for for um, a mobile home potentially, or you know, it was out it was on the on the coast, and you also had a house, a terraced house in uh, Deanstown Road in Finglas as well, which I don't think has been put on the market yet. So right. we'll try and keep an eye out for that when it might arrive. I'm in Ross's house now, and it is much snazzier, I have to say. So we have um, marble flooring in the kitchen, uh, a sort of a marble topped fitted kitchen in that. And 
panelling along all the walls. I should be an estate agent. You go into another sort of a sitting room with a door outside. I keep get I keep getting shoved out into the garage here, which I don't mean to. Well, I'm going to go upstairs and if have you look a down, if you look down to the left hand corner, there's a couple of little logos there. Um, okay. And you can hit the floor plan and then click on the, each room. There's the CCTV panel thing at the top of the stairs. Of course, when uh, the Guardi went into this house, they did discover that there was a, a tunnel underground leading to one of the outhouses and that there was a motorbike. Uh, it was right. better than that, Nicola. Was it? It was an escape chute. And, and, and if like you go into the main bedroom, you will actually see where... Seriously, can I go down it? If you, if you get into the bedroom, there's kind of a little curtain on a wall. Yeah. And that so then... I'm excited now I keep going into the wrong room. If you, oh, I see it. See, it kind of, it looks like a green thing. Yeah. So, and then if you go all the way back out to the steel shed. Yes. You'll see another hole in the wall. Oh my God. <laughs> where I presume there was some kind of ladder or, or a chute at the so time. So that's an upstairs spare bedroom. And obviously that was purpose built for the purpose of escaping Quick. enemies or police. What would you think? Both, maybe, depending. Uh, you're necessarily going to know who's at the door when they're banging hard on it. So I'd say it's it's some kind of an escape route or, I don't know, maybe you want to sneak out to the pub when your yeah. missus is watching TV and get back before she realises you've been out. Who knows? Look, Ross Browning is an interesting character, isn't he? I mean, we've seen him of late. Uh, he posts videos on social media. He's sort of got this spiritual zen thing going on. He certainly at one point appears to have tried to cut his links with the Kinahan cartel, but appears to have been drawn back as they became more desperate for operatives here in this country because there'd been so many arrests. Um, he's a peculiar character. I mean, he went off and studied this kind of Zen living with a, a doctor in the States. Not a, I don't think a medical doctor now. I think one of these... Doctor doctors. Doctor doctors, yeah. <laughs> Which um, doctors? <laughs> and he... he he does, he climbs up trees in the jungle and Yeah, and he's been spotted in, he's been spotted in a park in Ashburn, like doing his stretches and his, yeah. his, looks like Tai Chi movements or something like that, you know, very much, you know, going for this the. This was a rural, like, I mean, this was a big pad. This was a big compound, as we called it before. And there was obviously other building works going on for the stabling of horses and whatever else in this fields. Like, this was something that, uh, Ross Browning could only have dreamed of when he was growing up in Hardwick Street Flats, which is where he sort of became entangled with the Kinahan organisation. He would have grown up in the shadow of Gary Finnegan and other very close associates of Daniel Kinahan. Um, and I think he sort of started out his crim criminal career as a joyrider. His father was actually one of the uh, sort of uh, campaigners against, you know, the concerned family parents against drugs in the area. Um, but he didn't appear to live with the father. He lived with his mother um, there and obviously bought this pad out in, in Garristown in County Dublin, built uh, that red brick house, which is his own. And then on the old uh, lodge on the property, his his mother moved in. They're, look, they're a close family. We discovered that from the Criminal Assets Bureau case. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a lot of, I mean, there was a huge amount of um, material came out. I mean, and very much his plan was to try and, you know, disperse his his drug money through members of his family. I mean, there was other members that used uh, like credit cards to, to book even people related to the Kinnans, directly related to the Kinnans to fly from the States to, to various parts of the world. Um, you know, there was people, you know, using credit cards to to book f other flights for other other gang members, you know, to mm. various places. Um, you know, there, there was, and, and in return, then he was generous with, you know, watches and cars, and there was, you know, his his fitness business. Then, you know, employed a number of relatives as well, and yeah. of course, never really had any actual business. It certainly didn't seem to have had any actual real business. There was, I don't think, even any bank accounts associated directly with it at one point. So, uh, you know, in one sense, it was kind of a, a, a clumsy a clumsy attempt at kind of hiding your wealth. There's possibly, I suppose, the whole thing was conceived before they even thought about the Criminal Assets Bureau or didn't think the Criminal Assets Bureau would come after them. I mean, it was valued the, it was valued at about 1.4 million, mm. like the, 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 all the assets that they were going after. Now, there's a reserve price on this particular property at um, 550,000. But I mean, Garristown and North County Dublin are, are you know, prices are, are pretty... 
pretty keen to say the least, you know. I and mean, it's, it's, and, and, the auction and, date and time is Thursday, April 25th at 12 p.m. I mean, this is going to sell. It's all being sold together. You can't buy the property separate. Um, when you find, you do find with, um, with with some of these these auctions, like they'll initially, obviously, an auctioneer is or somebody you know who, who's selling it. In this case, the the state or the criminal spirit, they would they want to sell it as a single lot. Yeah. But like, if somebody offers a very good price for a you know a portion of the land, you know, and it hasn't sold as as a, as an entire lot, you know, that will be entertained at some point down the line. It won't necessarily you know initially be. I mean, obviously, a potential sticking point for, I suppose, any buyer is going to be the previous owner. Now, it, it was pretty much handed over, you know, w- without a fuss in the end. I mean, we have seen in the past where um, we know Liam Burns' property in Clondalkin that he had was, you know, burnt out and severely damaged. And, and it's, been, it's happened in one or two other cases as well where people go, well, if I can't have it, you can't have it. Yeah. So in this case, I mean, it has been left intact. Very and, much you know, so. It's and, very nice. You know, so I mean, in, in that sense, I suppose the members of the family have played, you know, ball with the authorities. Mm-hmm. And and there was a bit of to and fro Um there was there were, they hung on as long as they could, or you know, and I, it was what was it last June I think when they finally handed over Chestnut Lodge. Yeah, I and, mean, I feel this happened so quickly because <clears throat> was it twenty nineteen that these properties were raided? It was around that, yeah. I mean, that I mean, probably doesn't sound quickly to people, but for the Criminal Assets Bureau to go from walking in the doors of a property, uh, walking away with documents, computers, whatever else they seized. Um, and to actually get the keys and have this up for auction within, you know, well, you, we, four years. That's yeah. pretty good. Well, we saw that now with in Mago Gately's case that very much, uh, they, like that went to hearing just uh, two weeks ago and it was very much all down to, um, uh, I think, a, de- a detective sergeant who raided the house following the Regency Hotel noticed the very heavy metal door and thought to himself, that must be expensive. And then went on to see the big extension that doubled the size of the house at the back. And, you know, and Charlene Lamb, uh, Mago's partner, wasn't able to really, it wasn't, she just, she refused to give any explanation about how, mm. how it was paid for. And that was the, that was the kickoff for, for the cab investigation. So that's a six year, you know, a, a six year cab case, which was obviously running alongside all the kind of heavyweight investigation into the gangland feuding at the time. Mm. Um, and even by cab standards, like it was a slow enough case. It was, it went on and on. I mean, like we've, like the, the first um, legal aid hearing, I think was back in October, 22. And here we are now. And I mean, it took until March 24 <clears throat> before it finally came to hearing. And, you know, the, the judgment is, has, has still yet to come down. What do you think that warehousing was going to be for? I mean, there's seating attached to the wall there. That's obviously where the chute is. It? Yeah, that, is yeah. And, and that was that was the um, the motorbike belonging to... And the motorbike was beneath it. So it's, Yeah, b- belonging to one of the Fowlers from, from uh, Blakestown. Uh, and that that was mentioned in 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 the the cab case as well. The and motorbike was yeah, belonging to them. Yeah, and and it was it was actually used as you know to show another link to criminality. So this is where then that the Blakestown house, the Fowler's Blakestown house, is where Maria Arrakis. Of course, was found it, would that have been like one of the currencies of crime that we talk about when you see houses? I mean, Ross Browning at one point was registered as owners of some of the houses down on Hyde Road and in Limerick, where the McCarthy Dundon gang. Yeah. And, and and you had a you know a Dubliner was a Barry Doyle ended up staying in one of those properties at the yeah. time when he was working for the one of the Limerick gangs for the McCarthy Dundas. So they're the kind of things they use as currency. They use cars. They use motorbikes, etc. But that in behind that, where that motorbike was parked and where the chute from the bedroom comes down, the escape chute, that's looking like you know, seating for people attending some sort of a show jumping. Is this a show jumping arena that he's built? I mean, well, you could do. I mean, I mean, it's not exactly Jess Brook, you know, I mean, you're not going to have an entire gym cameras. It it is big, yeah. But I'm sure, you know, you could do a lot of your rural pursuits indoors there, all right. It's it's sizable enough. Look, it's very sizable. I mean, these 550,000 sounds like, I suppose that's only the you know, the, yeah. Uh, it's a reserve price. Reserve I mean, price, I, I'd imagine three acres and, you know, with, you know, that yeah. you can build on in Garristan is on its own is going to be extremely valuable. I mean, you could certainly run some sort of a business out of that property there, that warehousing, which looks as if it's top spec built from what I know. Uh, yeah. But I mean, there's flooring in it. There's, you know, it's brick halfway and then uh, the, the, is that tin, aluminium, roofing? Let's just say metallic roofing or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. <laughs> Galvanised. Um, 
So it is presented by B or G Gibson Auctions and it's there available for anybody who wants to have a little uh, look in behind the hall door of Ross Browning's uh, Garristown pad and anybody who's interested in buying it, of course, it's up for auction. What about Browning? What What's what's going on there? Well, apart from doing his Tai Chi in Park, uh, Park in Ashburn, I presume he's still, you know, Park and Park. Remains in Ireland mostly. Yeah, like he, he's obviously, there was a point where he, he might have feared that he was going to be arrested, um, <clears throat> you know, and charged with serious crimes, but he hasn't as yet. Now, that's not to say there aren't some investigations ongoing. And he must he be the arrested. only one that hasn't. I can't think of anybody else that <laughs> remains in the country that is <clears throat> anyway high profile in the Kinahan organisation that has escaped investigations, including I mean, money laundering and it, facilitation yeah. and everything else. He wasn't just high profile, like he was described in the cab case as the, the Kinnan cartel's number one man in Ireland. Yeah. And, you know, the number one man for a billion euro drug, mm-hmm. drug gang. So, I mean, it, they're described as a significant criminal, like, you know, at a, at a you know, a, a, at an international level. Mm. And no, he hasn't been, as far as, far as I know, there's, there's no... It is strange, all right, but anyway. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And let's see uh, how much that gaff goes for. Will you be bidding yourself? Um... I like that whole idea of having a slide from a bedroom into a that I prefer a slide shed. into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like the National Lottery ad, is it? Oh yeah, not, yeah. You know it's, that, well, I, I, it's not as I it's suppose. Like imagine the sort of thing you'd say to somebody if you won the lotto, what would you you know? And you could do anything you wanted in your house. What would you do? And and they said I, I'd build a shoot, an escape shoot from my bedroom. It's it's quite a dreamy fantasy type thing to do, isn't it? It, it? I mean, I can see the practicalities of it, obviously, if you're in that business. But... Yeah, but sometimes reality, I don't think, lives up to the the dreamy fantasy part. I mean, yeah. it's certainly not, um, um, you know, something that you'd see in, I don't know, it's, it's not the Batcave, you know. But somebody <laughs> could create, somebody could just sort of change it up a bit and make one of those sort of roundy slides and then put a paddling pool yeah. in the bottom of it. You could do it. You probably need to change, apply for a planning permission and all that. <laughs> it would get a, bit, that. get a bit boring then really, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's, look, it's fascinating to see that, isn't it? Anyway, right. Let's see how much that goes for. Thanks, Eamon. Thanks again, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.